My name is Konvaza O Adeyemo. Same program, Facts and Figure, on ABN Television. With me is someone you've known before. He has been with us on this program. And it's still the same person, Adepunle Adeleye, a political analyst. We're still going to be looking at the issue of Nigeria this week. And I know that you've heard a lot from this man. And today you'll still be hearing more as regards Nigerian politics. You're welcome on the show. Uh, thank you. Mr. Adekule Adeleye. Um, we'll be looking at something today. We have two major political parties in Nigeria. APC, PDP. And over time, we've come to realize that people we have in APC, the cross carpet to PDP. People in PDP, they're in APC. And uh, APC calling for the removal of PDP uh, elected uh, uh, in office, different offices. And why? But you look at this person that is shouting about PDP are not good today. He was once a PDP member. And the one talking about APC have to go. He's once an APC. But today is, I can't, do, do we see any sincerity in this uh, cross carpeting of these politicians in the interest of Nigeria? You will remember the first time I came here, I talked about ideology, uh, political ideology, and, uh, and I don't know if you agree with me that uh, most, if not all Nigerian politicians, lack any political belief, any political ideology. <clears throat> They're all interested in politics of self, politics of bread and water. So that is why the, whatever political party they see in my advantage, as a likely winner, that's where the cross come into. And, and, and I said, using pivotal moments to, to enact laws in, in our first interview. Those are, those are some of the things we look at, and the Nigerian government should look at, and enact a law whereby it would be almost impossible for politicians to cross campaign willy nilly. Does it mean you don't have the right to change political uh, your calculations? Of course you do. But when it becomes something of a life, of, of a pattern, of an irregular pattern, of a constant pattern, then we should be able to reduce it, if not totally stop it. And um, uh, I don't know if I answered that question correctly. Maybe I didn't get the input of the question. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll continue to say, I'll continue to say that uh, politicians have to have a political ideology, they have to have a belief, a set belief. I, for instance, I'm, 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 a, I'm a capitalist, but my, my, my part of capitalism is nuanced. I, I believe in benevolent capitalism. I, I, don't believe in, I, I don't believe in socialism and all other forms of uh, uh, political ideas, but I believe I'm a capitalist, but a benevolent capitalist. And that is one of the, one of the things that, that uh, a benevolent capitalist uses for policies, human security. And that would be very good for Africa, not just Nigeria, for Africa, because of our peculiar nature, uh, our peculiar institution, our particular, our particular geography. We will match together. We have, like Nigeria, for instance, a country of many nations. We have the North, dominated by the House of Fulani, the Middle Belt, the Bureau, and, you know, and some other uh, tribes. We have the South, South, South East, and the Southwest, which are Ninety uh, percent or more Yoruba and all that. So we, we, we I don't know. We, people we, and why? IBP would have solved the problem back in the in the nineties when he came up with option A four. Uh, I think at that time he he looked at the, the way Nigeria is and come and came up with option A four. That would have made it very difficult. That would have reduced all these cross capitals and all that. Those are one of the things that he did right. Uh, unfortunately. So now looking at twenty nineteen now, APC PDP. Do you think these are uh, different political parties or just different names or the same set of people in them? I, I do fear that I wouldn't be surprised if APC changed to a different name in the name, not, not too distant future. Yes, always, there's always rearrangement, arrangement and rearrangements politically just because uh, this person does not agree with that person, that person does not agree with the other person. It, we, we don't have a standard political party as of now yet. Because 
it, it, it's as if we are constantly evolving, and that shouldn't be. How many years are in this dispensation? How many, how many years ago? Almost 20 years now. We still have new political parties forming, new, new, uh, new, new, new connections, new aspirations, and all that. Uh, aspirations can go on forever. Don't get me wrong. But in terms of having a political party, I think we should by now have a kind of two or more political parties. I, I mean, I recommend two for Nigeria because with what came with option A for at the time? Say, for instance, um, you were from the same town. It's either your PDP or NRC. So that makes it more difficult. That brings the country together more than all these regional politics that we're playing now. So if you look at it now, in, the, in, in, in Nigeria, the, ca the gap between the rich and the poor, wild. What can anybody, what can Nigerians have from whoever they want to elect come 2019 that can bridge this gap between the poor and the rich? Uh, very, very simple. Uh, not, not so simple after all. Uh, um, it, but how to do it is very simple. You see, I always say it is not, it is not less. Having the, the, the leadership in Nigeria is not, uh, it's a big problem. But a bigger problem is problem of followership. I'm afraid Nigerians don't know how to follow who to follow, when to follow, why you follow. People just follow for personal, excuse me, people just follow for, for personal greed. And all that. So we, 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 the problem we have is more followership than leadership. That doesn't mean the, the leadership is less, but it's just that followership, followership is more. The, the moment Nigerians can ask why and make why almost exhaustible, I mean, if you ask them, if you're talking to a four-year-old child now, he goes, Daddy, uh, why did you do this that? You, t you tell the answer. Why did you do that that? You tell the answer. You make why also exhaustible. And why can never be exhausted? You just have to keep on asking the question. Ask the question. Ask the question. The mantra of uh, Washington Post, a newspaper here, is democracy dies in, in darkness. There is no better place to illustrate that than Nigeria. Our people are not informed. We need to start informing our people what is and what will be. And our people, are, uh, too, they need to ask, start asking questions from our, from our politicians. They don't, they don't just sit there and take it and, uh, and think everything is going to be OK. Now, if you look at some, if you look at it, some people are given the privilege. Like that was the time I had one. Uh, I guess another one individual in Nigeria was involved in the importation of rice. <laughs> and you know, before you know it, this person is mega rich, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, what is he really contributing back to? You know, all this. <laughs> you, you, what do you have to say about it? Uh, this, is, I mean, again, this is this this is just uh, secondary school economics. You can see what is going on here in America. What is going on with the sort of mergers and acquisitions? Yeah. The corporations are they're getting bigger, and the the, the uh, middle class is being eliminated, eliminated gradually. It's the same thing with Nigeria. When a, 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 an individual decides to monopolize the source of uh, uh, the economy, uh, the, 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 the the entrepreneurial spirit, it's all by one person, like uh, or Tedola, like. Uh, and then you got and then you got like Dan Guti. It, it's always going to be difficult for the economy to grow. It's a total fallacy for anybody, for any growing political economy to believe that its only sort of growth is just going to be the big corporations. Of course not. Here in America, in the UK, in Germany, we have small enterprises growing day by day. You have to have the, you have to have the right to make to come up with your own ideas and let it grow. But if you look at it right now, if you look at um, here in America, and in other words, we have people like Bill Gates, mm -hmm. also thriving in business. Oh, okay. Now, mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't go there. Don't, don't compare Bill Gates with the billionaires we have in Nigeria. Because Bill Gates came up, he's, he's using his own ideas to make money, and he's bettering the lives of people around in his community, even far and beyond. Do well, you, you want to compare that to, to Dan Gote that is using the source of income of other people to, to, for his own personal? Well, we tell you, like, he actually came up with his own idea. What, and what was that? 
and you have, you know, bringing a good, um, what do you call it, a good blueprint of what they want to do with the Nigerian business. What, you know, the uh, point is, Nigeria do not know what to do with their money. The, the, Nigerian, the Nigerian business has already existed before him. Uh, are you saying we don't have cement before Dangote was born? Are we saying we don't have, we don't have rice before Dangote was born? We don't have flour before Dangote was born? We don't have refineries before Dangote was born? Please, we, you don't have to understand his own blueprint is from personal enrichment. So are we saying that our leaders are so myopic in their thinking to sell out the what the nation should be using to, to, to get our youth employed well, by monopolizing, monopolizing it for and, one individual? And, and, is that what, is that what you're saying? the words out of my mouth. That is exactly what Daniel is doing with that sort of uh, ideas of this so-called blueprint. A blueprint that does not bring... Okay, are you saying, do you want to compare him to Tesla? Hmm. Elon Musk? You brought out his own idea. Do you want to compare him to um, what is his name? The guy that came up with Uber. So, are uh, these his ideas? The things he's, he's, he's preying on, and, and, and maybe I'm being rather mad here. The, 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 pro, the, pro, the, the, the um, product he's preying on has already that it's been existing ever before he was even born. But what if, if you ask me now, maybe Dangote is probably less than 60 years old now. If you look at it, we, there must be no, uh, we cannot identify a problem without looking for the, the way out, the solution here. Yeah. We've been talking about this thing going to like two weeks right now, and uh, we must look at it. We have uh, the light of Adenuga, we have the light of Dangote, we have the light of Ote Dollar, mm -hmm. having a very strong influence on the Nigerian economy. Now, people, thousands, millions of people are shouting of no job. What do you think the Nigerian government should do if they want to really provide for their people, for their youths and adults? It is such a shame that the uh, Nigerian economy is still tied to its politics. It's still tied to governance. Governments are meant to be fair umpire. Government are meant to be on the sideline or to create an enabling environment for people to be able to come up with ideas and grow. That's why I say it is very, I'm, I'm, I'm a capitalist, but a benevolent capitalist. And that system, what it does is that it gives people who have ideas they're going to go as much as they want, yet giving those who lack opportunities to be something. Thereby, we have a very good middle class. That's what benevolent capitalism is all about. That's just. I don't want to go into the intricate uh, definition of benevolent uh, capitalism, but for on look for, for listeners and onlookers, I don't want to come here and speak big grammars and all those political jargons and, and not inform the people. So that, that, that is what I think the government should do: detach themselves from politics, from the economy. Until they do that, we've always been where we are today. We'll always be there for another few. More years. Well, we'll be going on the commercial break right now. When we we'll come back, we'll still continue. My guest on this program is um, Mr. Adekule Adeleye, a political analyst. I know you are getting a lot of things. We are just here to talk about the way forward concerning some certain issues that pertains to Nigeria. Not criticizing anybody, but we just want to know how we can get a better country for ourselves that even while we are done outside the country, we can go back home and, and have a better country to relax and enjoy you know, our money. And even those who are at home, they can still stay back home and still make, you can stay in your country and make a living. It's not a must to travel. Not everybody needs to travel out of the country. Just stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, are you tired of using an auction card? You can own a zero mileage brand new vehicle with little or zero percent down payments. Here is a good news. Lekan or Lalikan is a new floor manager. A Stalin my call to your sender. It's ready to find you a deal that will work for you. Two years tire rotation, bumper to bumper, all to 36,000 miles, plus two years free oil change. Stalin my call to your sender. 9400 South West Freeway, Houston, Texas, 77074. Open 8 30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Email him at lagashin at stalingmacaltoyota.com or call him on 832-807-3581. 832-807-3581. Thank you for making me use a brand new car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
much you bad me. Do you have items you want to bring from Nigeria, such as clothes, shoes, packaged foodstuff? Or would you like to start a business in the US importing items from Nigeria to sell in stores like eBay and Amazon where lots of people are making good money now? Well, starting from March 1st, 2018, Ship to Nigeria will be shipping from Nigeria to the US for as low as $50. And most importantly, we will deliver to your doorstep anywhere in the USA within 7 to 10 business days. So by now you are asking, what do I need to do? It's simple. Drop off your item at our Lagos office or you can call us to schedule a pickup from anywhere in Nigeria. Our team will professionally pack your items, help with export documentation to ensure that they are never seized by the US customs as many people face now. You can even use our US warehouse, which is over 23,000 square foot of space to store your items for as long as you need them or you can have us dispatch to all your customers as they order from you from all over the US. We have the experience you need. So call us on the number on your screen. We're back on this same program on ABN Television. Facts and Figure is a program. Houston, Texas, United States of America. And with me is a uh, Mr. Adekule Adelaya, we're happy to have you on the show. Thank you. P I know viewers at home are really, they are really uh, finding it interesting why you're talking. But right now, I want to take us back to some certain things. I want to call our attention to something which I see back home then. And right now, I'm seeing another different thing here in America. And when I watch news, I look at it like, why is it being done here like this? And why is it being done like that? In Nigeria, when you see they want to introduce the president of the United States of America, you hear something like Donald Trump, the president of America. But when we want to introduce our own people, our own, yes, His Excellency, and um, this is Excellency syndrome. Is it really affecting the 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 office of these people? How do they see themselves? They they say they want to serve. The government is for the people, is, is by the people and for the people, right? Are they really seeing themselves like people who have come to serve or people who have come to lord over the citizenry that have voted them into power? What do you think about this, His Excellency Syndrome? I, I think you, you're absolutely right. It affects the performance. I mean, say for, you, you cannot call me God and want me to behave like God. I mean, if you call me an excellency, I want to behave like an excellency. It is psychological. And you're right. The Prime, Minister of, uh, the Prime Minister of the United, uh, of the United Kingdom, that's how, how he's addressed. Not the excellency, not his excellence or our excellency. The only ex excellency is God. And thank God Nigeria is a secular society. No one religion can go to the other in Nigeria. That's what the Constitution says. Uh, that's a topic for another day. But you're right. We're still going there. We're still going okay. there today. I mean, <laughs> well, uh, well uh, I have, uh, hopefully you, you ask me the right question now and give you the right answers. Well, if you call, if you address me as, if you address the President of Nigeria as His Excellency, or the, the, the Chairman of the local government, His Excellency, or the Governor of the State, His Excellency, he's going to want to behave like an Excellency. And that's why you see them loading over Nigerians, oppressing Nigerians, and closing the roads. And While I was living in the UK, I, I, I met member of parliament, I, I met uh, I met. I, I, I walked beside Boris Johnson. I walked. I walked. You know, in, 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 and, and, and former leaders in the UK. Was in Nigeria. The only place you can have access to them is here in America because once they come here, they become a normal human being. Let them get back to Nigeria. Let them get to Boris Johnson. Let them touch down. You already see a convoy of cars separating them from the people they are supposed to be serving. And you're right. Leadership is all about service, not about rulership. They've been ruling us, we were colonized, that we were enslaved at one point, then colonized, then they are being, and we're being ruled by our own people now. It, this is absolutely, this, this is crazy. I mean, if you, if you want to be my leader, I should be able to sit down with you, have a one-on-one -on -one with you. Are you saying that we are enslaved by our own people? Oh, but technically we are. Technically we are. Because if, if, I, if, I, if, if uh, a governor or a chairman of a local government is passing by, and I, I can't have access to the road just because it's passing by. Several times I've seen Tony Blair pass, and it, it doesn't disturb my own traffic. 
What are they hiding for? What are they hiding from? If they, if they are doing the right thing, they wouldn't have to be guided so generously or so so seriously. So so I, I don't know I don't know why, why. I mean this idea of calling our president his excellency high excellency our governors uh, chairman of local government is totally wrong. It's pervasive. Now if you look at it right now, when elections are coming, now we are having twenty nineteen election around the corner. Um, we can see in twenty fifteen. Uh, campaigns are taken to religious, uh, or do I, do I say churches, mosque? You now see that uh, uh, this aspirant wants to go to church and campaign. He wants to do a thanksgiving in church. He wants to do a thanksgiving in mosque in order to buy religiously, buy people to himself. Now, what is the position of? And we see Nigeria as a religious country, so to say. The position of the religious leaders in politics, in the affairs of Nigeria, is it helping matters or even causing more havoc to this country called Nigeria? Okay. Uh, first and foremost, you can have, you can stop in Nigeria and, and, a, and a primary leader to not to have a particular religion or to, to be uh, religious, religious free. You can't stop in Nigeria to be a Christian or Muslim or open worshiper or no religion at all. You can't stop. That's a fundamental right. But where, where I'm a little bit worried is where you get to power, you build a mosque, you build a church in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the government uh, office. That is wrong. And to answer your question directly, the problem, the, one of the biggest problems of Nigerian politics or Nigerian way of life, the Nigerian culture, is religion. Worshippers, they have become slaves to their pastors. Some worshippers even fear their husbands, their wives. More than uh, we fed past pastors more than the, more, more than the husbands and women, and it is it, and they are not helping. They are enslaving the people. They preach the Christianity of fair, Islam of fair. Maybe the worship worshippers because I've I, I not I've not uh, I not gone practice of to, to worship with them. But when it comes to Islam and Christianity, all they preach is fair, so that they, they can enslave the people you look for them. And, and you see. Christian, Christian, Christian preaches love. Islam preaches love. And those, the, that word, their actual, their actual words, show me you love me. Don't tell me you love me. So love is actional. It's actional. Show me to trust you. Don't tell me, trust me. You have to show me things. It has to be, you have to behave. It's, always, it's very behavioral. This idea of, of, of Christians or pastors or, or imams staying on a higher pulpit and having and abrogating to themselves higher standards and telling them they're going to lead us to, 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 to heaven, it, the race is not for the wise. It's, that's what the Bible says. You know, some, some pastors right now or some imams who, who will come on pulpit and are like, put, they give a word that this is the man you must vote for. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm probably more educated than some of these imams and pastors. So they can't tell me to, who to vote for. I have to be educated. Nigerians have to be educated. They have to be informed. You see, the Bible tells me, my people suffer because of lack of knowledge. What gives you knowledge? Information. And Nigerians don't have information. For you to believe in one pastor or one imam to tell you what to, who to vote for, what to wear, what to eat, it's, it's going too far. Now, looking at it right now, come 2019, a lot of people are coming out. Youths are also coming out. They want to become the president of Nigeria, our great noble country, Nigeria. Uh, now, having youths in the affair, uh, is it really that what we need is youths in the aim of affair of Nigeria to become a president? Is that what will solve the, the problem of Nigeria? Uh, is it because, is, is it youths of why? What do you think? Uh, is it youths that we need to solve this problem of Nigeria right now? I, I don't think uh, we, can, we can have a limit to how young or how old an aspirant is. Uh, uh, it is who, that person, who has love of Nigeria at heart, with the right ideas. I, I've told friends in Southern Discovery, in some forum, well, that uh, whoever had the right idea in this election cycle, do you have a chance? Maybe, maybe why with the power of the club, they might have a short, might have a, a better chance. I don't know. But I don't believe, I, I mean, it, it is how old you are, how young you are, does not determine 
if you are qualified to be Nigerian president. And, and I'll start to examples, where the youth are coming from. Uh, we have Shore right now, and uh, uh, the other guy, the, the other gentleman, uh, uh, Drew Tui. Drew Tui. Drew Tui, Drew Tui has Drew called himself, Drew Tui has called himself, uh, he is a motivational speaker. Do you know what motivational speakers do? They speak in abstracts. They speak in hypotheses. Nigeria is way too big. We're way too smart to be listening to something in hypotheses and abstracts. And you know, we need someone who is serious-minded. And which maybe he has some other ideas. I'm, I'm yet to, to, to listen to him. I'm looking forward to listening to him whenever it comes to Eastern or well, maybe I go to Nigeria. And and, and uh, what is the other the other chap? Uh, uh, sure. sure. It is, he has always identified problems, but I've never heard him speak about solutions. It's, it's not enough to know this problem exists. What is the solution? It's like going to a prophet. The prophet, oh, yesterday you ate a mother, today you, you are. That's nonsense. Tell me what the, problem, the solution to, my, to these problems are. But Nigerians are so, they've they, they, they reduced themselves to babies that they don't know what to ask for. And remember I, did, I said, ask why, ask how, ask what, ask where, ask when. You know, you have to ask questions. I, I'm a salesman. I used to be a salesman before I started my business with uh, some, some colleagues. And one of, the, one of the things where I thought in sales is never give up. Don't give up on the first no. Ask further questions. Now we're practicing democracy in Nigeria. Do we say? Are we? Do we, we practice? We, we, we copy this from countries like United States of America. Mm -hmm. Do we really copyright? Have we copied it right? Are we doing it right? Is this democracy indeed? What we're seeing in Nigeria right now is it democracy? We, we're obviously we're rank Xerox. Uh, we're human rank Xerox. But unfortunately, we copy wrong. We don't, we don't have any copyrights. <laughs> we don't copyright. Because, um, say for instance, uh, we adopted the uh, federal system in America. But, but I think that from the last I remember, our society is different from the United States. And, and I did tell you in an interview that um, every international system requires cultural adaptation. Mm -hmm. You have to take into consideration the culture, the people, the homogeneity of that culture. Into, into account before you adopt any system. Tweak it around. Everybody, of, of course, democracy is an, is an international system. But we have to practice it the way it will suit our own culture, it will, it will suit our own people, the way it will benefit our people, our children and our children's children. But to copy it like they do here in America and don't even do it properly, it is wrong. Uh, look for, look, look at, for instance, look at the issue of, of, of police. Police, too, is, is an international system. We have to adapt our police to our culture, to the happenstance in Nigeria, not to not to uh, to to adapt a system here that won't work in Nigeria. And in the last few years, a lot of people have been clamoring for state police. I have one word for such clamor: no. To wrap it up on this tour, as and so finally on this program. What is one word you have for Nigerians? Our people are dying every day. No food, no work, unemployed everywhere. Uh, power is even, <laughs> it's even zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Darkness everywhere, no power. Mm -hmm. What is one word you have for them for 2019? They are looking for a change, indeed. Mm -hmm. what, what can you tell them? What do they need to look at, out for? before they can go out there and cast their votes. I wish I can say one word. I'll say two words. Real change. Real change. That's, the, that's I mean, the real change. And they have to be part of the change. I, I'm sorry, I'm going to go a little further. They're going to have to be part of the change, because you can't have a change. It's, it's like a marriage. There are always two parties to a marriage. Those who, who the, the, the man and the woman, and in this case, the politicians and, and, and the voters. It is not enough to have the voter's card. It is your power to vote. But uh, will you be voting for the right people? Will some people bring you Gary and, and beans and 5,000, 10,000 5, and vote for You have sold your vote. You see, 
we Nigeria have to, we have to see ourselves like a cocoa seed. All this idea of our brigade approach uh, to an answer, it, it is wrong. It won't get us anywhere. It's gonna all it's gonna be part, back to square one. Same old, same old. But if you see ourselves like with cocoa seed, we have it has to be planted. Cocoa seed has to be planted first, watered, nurtured. It grows into a tree. Then it starts bearing fruit. And at some point, you start harvesting the fruit. You process it. Start having cocoa. Start having coffee. Then start having your cash in your pocket. That's what we're going to have to do. Otherwise, it's, good, it's always going to be the same old thing. And I, do you remember I said, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome is the beginning of bad things. Uh, we are getting there. Yes, this is where we're going to head into this program. Uh, facts and figure. My guest has been Ade Pule Adeleye. I'm Converter O Adeyemo. The point here is this don't think Nigeria will not be great again. We're still going to have a great Nigeria. But how are we going to get it? It lies, I believe, between you and I. Yes. Voting the right person and with the right conscience and ready to follow right in the right way. Doing what I have to do right. The leaders doing what they have to do right. We're still going to be coming back on this program next coming week. We're going to be on this program again next week. And if you have any question you want to send across to us, maybe you have your own contribution, you want to send a question across to us, you can contact the number on the screen, on your screen. Contact the number on your screen. Send your questions to, this, to the number on your screen. And definitely you will be attended to. And if it's, a, if it's so point, if it's so powerful that we need to talk about it. We pick it up and we we'll talk about it. And anytime we call on you, we know you're gonna come. We anytime we anytime again we call on you, we believe that oh, you're gonna come. Definitely, to definitely. Don't miss this program anytime. We are all for you here. My name will remain the same, Converter O Adeyemo. Discover the uniqueness in the entertainment industry. African Broadcasting Network, ABN, is now the pace setter in the industry. Do you want to advertise your product and services? Count on us. We will do it much more than your expectations. African Broadcasting Network, ABN, will deliver quick and prompt services. Our quality and clarity stands us out when it comes to delivering quality broadcasting. Our staffs are hardworking and versatile in the specific field of office. Our environment is so conducive and we are open to all. We also give advice on how to run your business profitably. African Broadcasting Network is situated at 9894 Eastern Street, Suite 875, Houston, Texas 77036. Contact phone 281 652 8396 and 832 490 8203. Website www.abntvnetwork.com. ABN celebrating Africans' rich cultural heritage.